I'm going to show you how to use goblet pleat tape to create a drapery panel like this with very popular goblet style pleats. Now this is a sew on tape and it's a very stiff tape so you don't need to add buckram to your drapery. You're going to make a drapery panel with a double fold heading at the top just like you would normally make a drapery panel and you don't need to finish off the top. You'll be sewing on the tape so that'll sew all the way through. I'm going to show you a few close-up features of this tape. One are the pull cords and these are what pull up the goblet pleats, pull up the fullness. There are pockets at the top of the tape if you want to use a two-prong pen or a drapery pen with a sharp end you can use those within here. And there are repeat indicating dots that are woven into the tape. There's one here and then there's one at the bottom right below it. So you'll be using this when you place the tape onto your drapery panel. There's also a stitching line in green at the top and the bottom edge of the tape. So to use the tape, you'll make your drapery, lay it out flat, and put the tape with the cords up facing you and the pockets up towards the top, about a quarter inch down from the top edge of the drapery panel. You want to center those repeat indicating marks onto the drapery like this. Now if you're doing a wider drapery um, or your repeat indicating dots come out um, within a big distance, you may want to decide a front and a return end on your drapery. So you'll start with a repeat indicating dot about a half inch from the edge on the front edge of your drapery and then let the tape fall as it may and then when you do the other side of your pair, you'll make sure that you start from this end. But for this drapery, I'm able to center the repeat indicating dots right on this single width drapery panel. So this is about a half inch from the end on both sides. I'm just going to stab a pin in there so that the tape doesn't move. And I'm going to trim away some of this excess first and pull out the cords. And the cords are woven within the tape. You can sort of see them coming out right here. It's a perfect spot to pull out a cord. I am using a pen to fish out the cord. And then after you pull out all the cords, you're going to trim the tape about an inch further than your panel and tuck it under. And I've pulled the cords out on the other end, so I'm going to walk over to the other end of the panel. I've pulled out the cords, and now I can trim away about an inch from the end of the panel, not trimming the cords and tuck that under. That gets pinned onto the drapery so that we can sew it. And I'm going to show you on this tape there are four pull cords. There are three large cords for pulling up the fullness on the tape and then there's one narrow cord, little nylon cord, that's for pulling up the gathers that create the goblet shape on the pleat. So you'll pin this about a quarter inch down from the top of the drapery all the way across your drapery and then sew it using that sewing line using a matching thread to your face fabric onto your drapery. Then after it's all sewn on you'll pull up the cords. So I'm going to just show you the cords what they look like pulled up. And be sure you tie off the cords on the opposite end. This is a little demo here. I haven't tied off those cords, but you make sure you tie off your cords before you pull them up on your drapery. But when you pull up your fullness, you create a pleat, and then you have that one small cord that's actually going to pull up the gathers at the base of the pleat. So that creates your goblet pleat all the way across the tape. And you end up with a drapery panel like this. You could add a covered button or a button embellishment at the base of the pleat. And this is a traversing panel and the pleats and spaces are already figured out for you so it's a great time saver as well.